Hey guys, Double Wide Six, and this is the second video of our Honda Harmony 2. It's an HRT 216 lawnmower. We had a leaky transmission. In the first video, I showed you how to remove the transmission after I figured it out, and that took me about maybe about a 40 minute job, I would say, because I had to take off every baffle. Um, luckily, I was smart enough to get this thing up on a table because uh, I've been having back problems so now we have this thing up right where we want it and uh, today I cleaned everything off and we're gonna begin um, taking it apart so at this point I have the transmission cleaned off and I've gone around the perimeter and removed all the Torx head screws and there's like a plate with the screen or with the spring that was on here I took this off I wasn't sure if I need to and there was also this metal thing and I've taken this off and now I'm just trying to get the case to pop apart to see what's inside I don't know if there's like RTV cement between the case or a gasket or what, but whatever it is, it's, it's pretty stuck. I'm just not seeing any splitting apart. Uh, I can hear it a little bit. It sounds like RTV sealant. Alright, um, it seems to be a little easier to actually pry uh, with this thing upside down. So, this is the bottom side here. And I'm thinking there seems to be more pry points to get a screwdriver in here. Here we go. And I did read a little online about this thing and basically all it said is that it was uh, non-serviceable and it needed to be replaced and soon enough we might figure out why <laughs> yeah they just have it RTV sealing it together Something holding it. All right. There comes what they call grease, but it looks more like an oil. But uh, Honda makes their own fluid to go in there. I think they call it grease, though. This thing is still just stuck on here. And I'm not sure why. Alright. Finally, it's off. Well, this thing looks pretty good. Uh, I was expecting to actually see plastic gears. Uh, but from the looks of things, these gears are all metal and in good shape. Alright everyone out there, uh, gosh it's got to be about 10 days later here. Um, I ordered a bunch of Honda seals and these uh, bushings, but these did not fit. So they fit the shaft, but they didn't fit the uh, outside of these green bushings. So 
after I pulled out the original oil seals um, they have some metric numbers on there and I was able to get the right size um, oil seals and they're 12.5 by 19 by 5 millimeter so I've already installed one here I'm gonna put one on the other side and this one up here is the exact same size so I ended up getting three of them and um, I was able to actually find those on eBay so we'll show you how to put this thing back together hopefully so here's how I'm going about doing this I'm just sliding off the old bushing which kinda looks like this the seals are on the outside and you can just take like a screwdriver and pop these out with a little bit of twisting there we go and then the new seal will fit right in here they're a nice snug fit so I'm just pushing those in and I'm putting a little bit of oil right down the shaft and once we have that we can work our seal right down the shaft to where it needs to be oops this one popped off there there we go yeah the funny thing is is the way the uh, plastic case is with this thing you can't do the seals from the outside of the plastic case because you can't access them so you have to take everything apart kind of a pain so I did the two end seals on here underneath the green bushings and the last one is actually on this uh, top shaft here now this one actually feels really loose so it's a good thing I ordered that and we'll fit that one right on there just like that so that's the three seals and that is where I think my leak was coming from one of those three seals I think it might have been coming out the top and also one of the sides um, so now what we're gonna do is uh, try and reassemble this thing um, I was not able I didn't have to actually take this apart to uh, line up this yoke on the main shaft so I'm basically gonna try and pressure fit this thing back on here and then reassemble the entire transmission hey guys double wide six and uh, <clears throat> I think this is my third time at filming this video I started out taking it off the lawnmower and then once I got it off the lawnmower I started taking this case apart I ordered a whole bunch of uh, Honda parts but it turned out I got the wrong parts uh, I was online and uh, found out some part numbers through a forum and they turned out to be the the wrong part numbers so I ordered some new these green things are the bushings and then the oil seals so I ended up putting everything together on film and I noticed that once I had this thing attached uh, the transmission wasn't engaging and uh, I popped it apart which was a pain and I realized that this particular thing here see how it's like curved out I had it reversed so this curve was coming back towards my finger and when I would pull the lever to engage it it wasn't pushing over on this plate what happens is this plate pushes over and it actually pinches this gear here so when this gets pushed this way it pinches the gear because um, this this brass gear is not actually connected to the shaft so as you can see I can spin that but hold the shaft so it's a friction fit when this gets pushed over that way it tightens up and this will turn this which in turn turns the main shaft running through the axle so anyhow uh, I had this thing in I had oil in it and all that and it wasn't engaging something was wrong so I pulled it apart 
and uh, I had to clean up this gasket maker all the way around and now I'm actually ready to reseal it. Um, I noticed once I had it together I also noticed it looked like uh, a very slight leak right here and um, I'm not sure because I had to assemble this with oil in it which isn't good for that gasket maker so what I've decided to do was put in a plug so I put a plug in here I just tapped a hole I used a uh, actually I have two carburetor bowl nut gaskets just stacked there and I put Teflon tape on it and that really seems to be good and tight so uh, I think what I'm gonna do is seal this thing up and then once it's sealed we'll add the oil in here now this oil doesn't have to be changed um, at least Honda doesn't say it needs to be changed that's why they have a sealed unit and um, I've decided that I want to be able to change the oil and the reason for that is number one I don't want oil in here when I'm using the gasket maker and number two um, when I pulled the oil out of mine the oil was like black and uh, you know it's black because uh, it's from it's contaminated oil basically so I want to have the option to fill it later and also be able to change it and I think what I'll do is I'll use it for a season and then drain the oil because I'm sure there's going to be little particles in here and I just want to get that stuff out one other thing that I did was when I took this thing apart I realized that I could actually flip this gear over um, the teeth on it were slightly worn down and I couldn't find a replacement part but by actually flipping the gear you get a better bite on this worm gear that actually connects to it so the angle is still going the, the same way just by reversing it so I'm happy in that respect that I had to take it apart because uh, not that it was slipping or anything but this will last a little longer and I wasn't able to find that replacement part anywhere online okay we're gonna try and get this thing in here so this is the hardest part just trying to get this yoke in here to line up and I know it takes like some pretty good wiggling at least it did last time and you got to be a little bit forceful with it um, I, I wasn't able to remove this yoke and I probably didn't pull hard enough to actually get it to remove but there we go with a little pushing you can get it to engage okay that looks like that's in there good the next thing that you have to do is put in this thing and this goes in here this way so that that curve goes away from me so that'll lock in good and there's a nut that goes on the back of that now the next thing that I want to do is uh, drop this worm gear in here this is going to slip in here and I already put the bushing down in that hole so we'll slip this thing down it seems good there and uh, now what I want to do is run the rest of my RTV sealing around the whole case then we'll drop in our gears and we'll seal it up alright we got everything in there the way we want it just gonna pick this thing up try and slip it in here there we go nice perfect fit and that's meshed very well with the worm gear alright now on top of here is a cap I want to be sure not to forget that that will go there and I'm gonna run RTV around this top case I have a fair amount on here and uh, I'm just gonna do a lighter amount on this top and then I think we can try and get it attached 
So at this point I have everything together. I've put the uh, RTV on the other half and the main thing is just to make sure that you get your pins here to line up. So this and this pin here need to line up and you just need to take your time and I put it up in the vise so that I can kind of bend over and look at it to make sure things are lining up properly and last time I did this it did take some fiddling around to get it to line up right where I needed it but there we go with a little bit of fiddling there you go it'll plop right on and now the nice thing is I don't have oil in this so I can flip this thing over and we can drive our screws down in here so I'm just going to insert these torque screws all right so as you can see I got it all buttoned up with these uh, torque screws and I did my test like I did the first time when it didn't work and you can see how when I turn the shaft here that center post is spinning and I was pulling that shaft and uh, my center post wasn't spinning so it wasn't engaging so um, by taking it apart and doing it the second time um, I was able to get it in there right uh, I won't know if it works for sure until I get it into the mower now there's no oil in this crankcase and I didn't really add too much oil to the gears because I don't really think they're going to get that hot and they're not really really tight clearances so once I add oil it'll splash around and get on everything pretty quick. Um, one of my subscribers mentioned in the last video that a lot of the problems with these Hondas as far as the wheels not working has to do with these little tiny springs in that keyway there and I noticed that there was a fair amount of dirt in both of these so I took his advice and I cleaned that out with a little brake cleaner made sure the spring was working well on both ends and I guess now all I have to do is I want to let that gasket maker sit probably for 48 hours just so that I'm sure that it's good and dry and then I'm gonna pull my plug and add my oil it takes four ounces um, I was going to add 5w50 synthetic um, I've used that for other transmissions but from what I read online you want to put in four ounces of 10w30 synthetic so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna engrave on the bottom the amount of ounces and uh, the oil to use and I also I took a little risk here by putting this plug in I don't want it to leak so the smart thing to do would be put it on the top side of the transmission but the problem with doing that is you can't access it or drain it if it's on top so I tapped it and I put it on the bottom and I'm going to use like a syringe to add the four ounces of oil so hopefully we have no leaks and also by having it on the bottom it gives me a chance to change the oil down the road so uh, I guess the next part of this video what I'm going to do is uh, hopefully show you the lawnmower back up and running and uh, we can see if this repair worked or not all right guys it's later on same day I only gave that RTV about eight hours to dry but it seems good and uh, I put the mower back together I tested it out and the wheels weren't turning at all and uh, I found out quickly that I had the ratchets on the wheels backwards so I flipped those around and the mower really seems to be pulling itself quite well I did a few hills and uh, the uh, the traction on the wheels there's nothing there so I'm gonna order some new wheels all around for the mower but uh, anyhow it seems to be working great um, it was a very tough project um, 
everything just from taking the transmission out that was a bit of work and then uh you know putting the thing back together after i got the seals in so um i don't know is it is it worth it if you do it yourself i, I guess it is if you like playing around with this stuff and you have time um i think the whole job took me probably about three hours maybe four um but everything worked out well eventually i had a couple little hiccups there where uh i had to take it apart and then put it back together but i got it done and i'm happy i did it um you know it only costs about six bucks in seals uh, in order to fix this thing so uh you know it's it's probably like a 400 hundred dollar mower new so anyhow i'll show you this thing running um and uh i'll show you the transmission when i'm done we'll take a quick look Now we'll take a quick look at the transmission here. So looking underneath, um, I'm tilting it with the carburetor side up, but here's the plug. And uh, you know, there's no leaking out of the transmission. It looks good. I filled it up with, uh, I put a hair over four ounces. And I actually went with the uh, 5W50 synthetic, even though they recommend the 1030 synthetic, just because it's a little bit thicker. And uh, I wanted to make sure, you know, that it, it didn't leak. And I had the, uh, I put a plastic bag in the gas cap so the gas wouldn't leak. I had the oil completely out of it. And I had it flipped upside down on the top on the grass. And I pulled that plug and uh, added the oil. I just used a little syringe. Uh, so that worked out pretty well. And, um, you know, I, I think this job is pretty tough, but you can be done. Anyone could do it. Just take your time, go step by step. And, um, you know, I know these lawnmowers are expensive, but they're probably my favorite lawnmower. I really like the Hondas. And one of the main things I like about them is that they mulch quite well. Our grass isn't too high, I have a mulch plug in, and I always throw the bag on when I cut my lawns, even if I'm mulching. And you know what, I pretty much mulch. I don't bag usually anything unless the grass is really high or I'm picking up leaves. So uh, if you're interested in fixing your Honda lawnmower, you can follow these videos. Or you can click on the link that I'll put at the bottom of this video. That'll take you to uh, a transmission that you can order. And um, they range in prices, but they are available. And now, after doing this job, I see why Honda doesn't service these. And if you take it to a Honda dealer to have a transmission put in, it's going to cost 300 bucks. So you're better off, you know, doing it yourself and just buying a transmission. You can probably, I think. You can get them for about 150 to 250 for most of the transmissions. So anyhow, I'm Double Wide Six. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. That helps out and more people get to see the video that way. So thanks for watching. Have a good day.